If you're worried that your SEO isn't strong, but you're not sure how to fix it and how to track it, or if you're not being indexed by Google, this video is for you. Most business owners have no idea about Search Console, Google Analytics, indexing, but this video is gonna make everything nice and clear for you. But I just wanna give you kind of a metaphorical example. Imagine that you have a business that sells products and the product is the SEO or the SEO comes from the products and your products are not being indexed on Google. You will not sell anything unless you do ads. So the first thing I want you to do is I want you to go on Google. I'm going to do a quick test to see the indexing of a website. So I'm going to do site2men.it, which is the website that I work the most on and I can see that I'm being indexed incredibly well. I am built on Shopify. Right now in 2023, today is uh, 16th of March 2023, I highly recommend you just, if, if you want to sell something online, whether it's drop shipping or you just need a shop of some kind, print on demand, or you know just helping local businesses, giving a service to local businesses where you set them up a website and you help them sell, I highly recommend you use Shopify. People are very tempted to use WordPress, but I actually would recommend Shopify over WordPress. And guess what? I'm not even affiliated with them because Shopify will not give me an affiliate link. I've asked them, but they will not give me one, which is kind of annoying because I do so much promotion for them. But basically, Shopify does this all very, very easily for you. But I want to go really into some detail in this video. So I've got a WordPress website here and a Shopify website here. This is just a partner account uh, development store. But basically what, what you want to do is you want to go to Google Analytics first of all. So just make sure you have a Gmail that you can use for all of your business stuff. Okay, so whatever your business is at gmail.com. Okay, honestly, it's just so much better. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an account and I'm going to call it um, test because we're just doing a test here. I'm going to press next and I'm going to press show advanced options and I'm going to create a universal analytics property. And that's just because right now that's uh, what um, Google, uh, Shopify is using. Okay, so they haven't actually changed this yet. So it's still UA. I'm pretty sure it has to be UA on Shopify specifically. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a um, domain. I'm just going to put test.com. I want to see if that works. Probably not. Okay, no, it does. Obviously, you put your website name there, not test. <laughs> and it doesn't really matter what you click here. It doesn't really matter what you click here. Just I accept, whatever. This will then give you this page here. It will just open a load of these things, but I recommend you just close them all because we're just looking specifically for the code. So it looks like Shopify is changing this pretty soon, so you're probably going to have to go on the Google app um, and just put the code here. But you need this code here and you need to put it here, okay, basically. But you just need a Google Analytics account anyway, okay. So what you would then do with this code, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this exact process with my WordPress account because it looks like Shopify is changing it anyway. Oh, okay, the universal analytics property is still available, so we can do this step. So you just want to go on settings here or admin and then go on the middle one, click tracking info and click tracking code. This universal analytics code is only going to be good for another few months, but this is what you need right here. And this is what you need to put into Shopify at the moment. So it's actually this code here. There we go. So when I hit save now, that will work. And for now, that's how you do it on Shopify, but it's going to change very, very soon on Shopify. But we have this code here for um, the crypto file, which is a website I made as an experiment last year. And I do intend on making another website, guys, just to show you the process. So, But there is already videos on that on my channel, um, but they have bad thumbnails and nobody clicks them. Okay, so on WordPress, what we want to do is it's pretty simple. We just want to go to rank math. So I should have rank math already. <clears throat> if you don't, you can go to plugins, add new, and then just install rank math. So once you're here, you, what you want to do is you want to find the wizard. So you'll be greeted by the wizard after you install it. But I'm going to click on the setup wizard just to open up the wizard here. Uh, let's go with 
let's just go with easy, honestly, because this is a tutorial for people who have never done this before. So you want to make sure that you fill in everything properly here, like I already have. So you want to put your logo, etc., etc., default sharing image. This is the really important thing, okay? So I'm going to disconnect this because obviously yours will not be connected. And this is what you will be greeted with. And you want to connect Google services. And what this is going to do is we're going to use our Google Analytics property in order to do everything for us, okay? So you're not going to have to worry about anything. Rank Math is just going to do this all for us. So you can see here, uh, we want to select the correct analytics account. So we're going to click on test. We'll click on test and then all website data. Let's say install analytics code as well. AdSense, we won't mess with AdSense just yet. And then we'll hit save and continue. So now it says our site is ready. So let's return to dashboard and let's go to search console and let's see if we're connected or not. So that has connected. It might have just been connected anyway. So I just want to check if... Yeah, it looks like Search Console is on now. Um, so that's basically all you have to do. So you, you make a Search Console account, use the same Gmail, obviously. Just use your Google account for all this stuff, guys. It's so much easier. And then I'm going to show you the really special part of this, okay? So on Search Console, there is a little section on the left called sitemaps. This is such an important step. I can't understate this enough how important this is for SEO. So we're going to go on uh, the cryptofile.me slash sitemap.xml. And guess what? Rank Math has also just made this for you as well. And what you want to do is you want to put the sitemap here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, I probably don't want to delete this, but I don't really care about this website. So let's just remove it. <laughs> okay, so because I, because uh, Rank Math is so good on WordPress, it just does this all for you. But, and I'm going to show you this as well, Shopify does the same thing, but without even needing to install the Rank Math plugin. Okay, so this is the search console of Two Men, which is built on Shopify. And let me just change it to English, which I learned you could do here. And I was getting a lot of complaints because I'm doing it in Italian. And then on the left, again, we're going to click sitemaps. Okay. And we're going to do the same thing. So we're going to go to two men.it slash sitemap.xml. Okay. It's completely up to you how you want to play this. So you can just submit uh, the sitemap. Okay. And that's probably what I should have done. But I personally decided to also submit the uh, Russian products and just the Russian sitemap just to see if we could get indexed and maybe get some interesting traffic from that uh, without doing any kind of backlinks directly to like two men dot it slash RU for Russia. So I just thought that just putting those as well might increase the chances of us appearing in Russian speaking countries, which is, a, of course, really big for us. So now what I want to do is I really want to just break down how to use Search Console. So everything I've shown you so far, you should be doing even if you, you're paying someone to run your website, okay? You need to be asking them, have you set up Search Console? Especially if they're doing SEO, you want to be able to, you want access to the Search Console. You want to be pestering them constantly saying, uh, you know, why, okay, maybe after six months. Give them six months uh, if it's a new website, maybe five months. And if you see if you're not seeing anything, or even two or three months, honestly, and if you're not seeing any impressions, then you need to really be on their case. Are you writing enough content? Is it interlinked? Are there images in there? You know, um, are there authoritative external links, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Like you really you need to know what's indexed and what's not. So I showed you how to check what's indexed on your website before. You want to be doing that every day. Honestly, if you're really serious about your business, you need to learn these things, guys, okay? So if you're a non-tech person, this video is for you. I really hope that this helps you actually understand these things. So what I normally like to do is I like to turn off clicks, okay? And I get a lot of crap for this in the comments, people saying I'm hiding my clicks, etc., etc. But for me, it's just more of a mental thing. Like, clicks come with impressions, and impressions are really the important thing. Clicks are obviously what you want, 
but impressions are the best indicator that things are either going well or going badly. Clicks, it can be very up and down because you can go from position one to position three to position seven and just lose all your clicks. But the impressions, you know that your website is still strong because you have the impressions, basically. Another tip is never turn all of these four on at the same time because it's completely pointless. The reason for that is because your average click-through rate will fall as your impressions and your keywords increase and your average position just it it just doesn't make any sense okay to to have them all on at the same time so i personally just like to look at impressions i like to look at 3 months and i like to click here to see which um keywords first of all are doing the best and if i see one that is important to me like kit on which is literally the most important keyword i like to click it and i like to see how it's doing and this is what i was talking about before with um everything being very up and down, okay? So a lot of people will see this and they'll panic, okay? But for me, it's the opposite. I am actually happy when I see this because I know that this means it's like a healthy healthy relationship with Google because this is Google in a nutshell. They can decide one day to just put you onto the third page for no reason. Nothing's changed. They just think you deserve some time on the third page, basically. So that's a really good indicator. I like to look for keywords that are very important for the company. Uh, you can ask your client, if you're a freelancer, what keywords are you looking to um, move up in the rankings of, and then you can show, the, show them all of these things as well. So again, Italian cashmere, this is uh, a really solid keyword for me. Um, it's not like a super important keyword, but just for me personally, I think it's a really good keyword that we've managed to pick up. And it, it's a very steady keyword that looks like it's not got much chance of disappearing. Cesare Attalini, incredibly important for us. You can see that in this case, I'm actually disappointed because it looks like it's not quite at the level that it was before. And it looks like it's a bit longer term as well. But what I can do is, so this is, this is the keyword. Cesare Attalini. But what, what this, th this could be because one of my pages disappeared, like a product page, and instead my brand page, which is the more important page because it's the longer term SEO target, could still be here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on pages to the right of queries and I'm going to click on Cesare Attalini, the collection, okay? So it looks like it's actually the collection page that is, um, it's not really down to be fair. It's kind of just, let's compare the last 28 days, the last 28 days to see how it's actually doing. So you click on uh, where it says last three months, click on compare, and then click on compare last 28 days to the previous period like that. And you can see that it's actually grown in impressions. Okay, so I am not disappointed at all. That's actually really, really good. This kind of thing is the nuance of SEO that you need to understand. You need to be checking this stuff because you need to know when something is wrong. Okay. So a lot of people, they just don't know when something is wrong. I had a client in a consult call the other day and I looked at their search console and after three minutes, I found some huge problem with their website that they really, really needed to fix and that they have fixed, and hopefully we'll see some good uh, kickback from that. So I want to show you guys this keyword here because I am super happy with this, and this this could be huge for us, okay? This is a super important keyword, one that I'm really, really trying to get. And for me, it's a personal triumph because the website that I joined three years ago or two and a half years ago, I think, um, they don't have the structure where it's split between brand plus product, okay? So uh, kit on plus suit. So if you go on Google and type kit on suit, our, the website that I originally started working for, um, the kit on brand page is the thing that is on Google right now, on the SERP, the search engine result page. But what I th thought and what I'm now being vindicated on is that I could do better than that. And that's what I did. I created a collection page for Kiton Suits, and that's exactly what's happening. And this is super, super exciting. This is the kind of stuff that people who watch some of my videos and just assume that I have no idea what I'm talking about, this is the kind of stuff that they don't understand. 
and that I do understand, okay? Growing a website is about the small wins. You can go for the 5 million keyword search volume if you really want, but like realistically, you don't have that much of a chance of getting it. So what I do is I go for the small wins and go for the really important keywords and it's working. So let's go on the other thing I like to do, the other exercise I like to do. So that's queries. The other exercise that's super, super important is pages. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the word rough from uh, the filter because I have, they're here. I have all of these pages, which is from my table of contents tool. So I'm just going to say URLs not containing rough. This is a really good exercise as well. If you want to look at specific pages, specific keywords, you can use the uh, filters here. Okay. So there's URL not containing, there's keyword containing, not containing, et cetera, et cetera. So you can have a look through that. So what I like to do, this is how you see a kind of macro overview of how your blog is doing or how your pages are doing generally, whether it's more blogs that are appearing on Google or products that are appearing on Google or collections that are appearing on Google, whatever it might be, this is where you get your macro overview of what is happening. So what I like to do, the exact same thing, I like to click on things like, you know, just random pages and just seeing how everything's doing. That looks like it was a really beautiful jump and that I'm just super happy with that. I'm just super happy with that, honestly. That's really, really nice to see. That's perfect to see. So you can actually see, like, this is where I posted it on YouTube. Me posting it on YouTube had no effect on the actual ranking. So people that think that I'm cheating by posting on YouTube, they, they don't understand SEO, to be honest with you. The way that if you want to cheat by using YouTube, what you do is you go and you tell people to Google a certain thing uh, in, like, a mass way, and then you get people to manipulate you to the top. But that's, yeah, that's not what I'm doing at all. So let's click on Kiton here. And again, you can probably hear the excitement in my voice It's really hard to control because I love my job and I love seeing things like this. One of the last things I want to show you guys is that if you want to see like, if it's still in that state, if it's still in that state of growth like this, you can click on date and then click on most recent dates. And you can compare the current impressions 374 to what it is there, which is 437. But you can expect the number on uh, most recent date that will grow as the day continues. So basically, if you look at it at 10 o'clock in the morning, the number that you look at at midnight will be completely different, basically. So yeah, this is just an exercise that you have to do. I do this daily just to make sure that everything is growing, everything is good. And right now, everything is growing and everything is good. So often another thing is you can see on analytics which pages are currently growing. And I saw that the, this blog post that I wrote about Hugo Boss suits was growing, but I haven't actually looked at it in Search Console. And I could have told you before I clicked on it that this was growing. And you can see the clicks are growing as well because I also look at Google Analytics fairly frequently because I'm serious about this business. And if you are serious about your business, I really hope that you found this video useful. I really hope that this helps you get indexed. And thanks for watching, guys. I'm going to leave it there, and I'll see you really soon with some more content. Peace out.